You should see the video clips I'm gonna talk to you about right now. You say bong rip? Yeah, why? <laughs> you smell like weed, nigga. I do. You just suck dick? Yep. You smell like dick and onions, dog. Hey, do you, you, sure, you want to put your thumbs inside your um sweater things real quick? Yeah, let's go. So you look cool? I like those built-in hand warmers. Why do you talk shit, dude? What? Why do you talk shit? Why are you so nervous? I'm not nervous. Here you are. You are. The size of your hat. Eight. You got a really big fucking head. Eight is big. Dude. Oh my god. <laughs> hey, look at this thing. <laughs> look how big it is on me. It's like my this. kid trying to put my hat like on. <laughs> It's Holy not tight shit. on my head. Dude, I do have a big head. That is gnarly. What up, peoples? We got blessed with Colin Morrison's presence today. Mr. AKA Scummy. What's up, buddy? Finally made it down here. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to take this whole thing serious with you right now. Kind of weird. <laughs> I was even saying that different. You and me being serious for once. How long do you think we've known each other? Since... 98? Mm. 99? Any dirt bike think? dude in the whole career, I think you were the first guy. It actually was. Where where did we meet, though? What contest was it? It was actually back at uh, Four Leaf. Is that what it was? Havasu. I want to say I did freestyle even before you. You did, you did, because my first contest was the Havasu. I did Tacoma. Were you in Havasu? Mm -hmm. That was my first one. Yeah, but I think uh, even before that, remember the monster trucks at uh, the Coliseum where you were in the stands and I was jumping with Deegan? I think that might have been before Four Leaf. Might have been. I don't Who knows? Remember. But I remember the first time I saw you was at Vegas and uh, you were doing the big triple heel clicker. <laughs> that was like a big deal back then. And you're Crowd just, pleaser. Yeah, and that's... I don't even think we talked still at that contest. I think it was still a couple shows after that, but that's where I saw you. And then I, I don't even know. Where did we meet? I think it was a four leaf one. Dude, what year was that? It was like 99? No, 98. I think it was 98. It was I think 98. We were 16. Because right after that, I think we just really hit it off. And then I remember. You and me were the youngest. We were the guys <laughs> on the 125s doing all the jumps. I remember that, that. A lot of other dudes weren't doing on the 250s. And then after that, you, me, and then we linked up with Manly. Yep. And then that was our crew for years. Yeah, because it was, uh, I, think, I think we'd had a lot to do with it. That was a big deal, man. I could see that, yeah. That's what brought <laughs> us together. So I think we were the only ones getting so high. <laughs> all day long people were tripping how we could even be walking and then we were going out there jumping riding <laughs> doing pretty good i guess we thought we were but i don't think we were i was winning shit so I, actually you were uh, it was working for me <laughs> and at the time freestyle wasn't where it was where no, it wasn't as serious as it is now like so, nowadays it's it's like gnarly so but. i think back then it was a big deal even going out there again high and doing a seat grab like we were like at the time that was kind of that was the top of the game. We were doing good. <clears throat> That's funny. That was way back then. I can't believe we pulled it through all those years. Yeah, there's, I mean, I think this interview would go for a day talking about all the stories, what happened, all that stuff. But, no, we uh, we linked up. We became really good friends. Did everything together. I mean, you were, I mean, still are declared like a best friend. But back then, we did everything together from... You'd come stay at my house. I'd drive three hours to come stay at your house. And, <laughs> yeah, we do everything, man. Travel. We The funnest times, I think, was when we'd ride 50s and, and dirt bikes every day. That was a big thing. When we I, first moved to uh, Menifee. Yeah, Menifee. You and Bo moved to Menifee. And then I still kind of tell people I lived with you guys. But even though I, it wasn't my house, <laughs> you pretty, you had I was there. there I had my there. own room. And that room was sketchy. I remember, dude, remember how bad that room smelled for some reason <laughs> we always said we thought somebody died in that room because like really like it smelled like death in there and they would just give me a i don't even think it was a sleep bag i think it was even like a beach towel but that was my my bed beach towel pillow but dude we were pumped it was we're me you manly and we just wake up 
ride 50s. I want to say we kind of started that 50 frenzy deal, but I think I said that on some social media post when I posted a picture of you and me, and then I got called out from Randy Lawrence because I forgot those guys actually did. Yeah. But those were the Z50s at... I don't know, it was kind of lame, but we kind of did start the, the 50 deal where we'd go out and hit BMX jumps on 50s, and that grew into something big. <laughs> that was Everybody fun as hell. Everybody was doing it. Everyone yeah. started getting 50s. We would break them every day. I still don't even realize why we didn't even think about getting 110s because it would have made a lot more sense. Those 50s, dude, were so small, but we were still going big on those It things. would have been way better. Yeah, some of the things we did on that, so that was cool. What sticks out in my head is that we would ride from there. We would do. We would ride on major streets, going through gnarly four lane intersections, and we we would ride to Manny's house. And then just for fun, nobody was there, no filmers. We would go hit that 220 foot dirt hit, <laughs> bong rips all day long in this jump, dude. I mean, 220 foot dirt to dirt hit. That was huge, and we would do that all day long, and like it was no big deal. To ride back and. It was at the point when we were filming our movie, Twitch and Scummy, I mean, we we hit it. I remember I was right behind you, but we were going back up, and I tell people, when you're chain broken, <laughs> people don't realize, man. Like, that's that the dirt bike right, rider's man. worst nightmare, that we, we hit it. Fifth gear, you know, pretty wide open. Let's just say wide open, because it was huge. We turned around, went back up. And right before you were about to drop down, I was right behind you, your chain broke. And I remember you laughed about it, I laughed, I went up, I'm like, <laughs> you know, we were just laughing like, that just Beavis and Butthead. But oh, dude, it would have been so dirty. That's what I'm saying, growing up and really thinking about it, you would you would be dead. Like, And there's so many times where it was like that, like one thing like that, you, you'd be dead. I mean, if your chain broke <laughs> another 200 feet, it'd be game out but that was like our life every single day just truly living on the edge and like you read these stories about molly crew and how gnarly those guys were and that whole lifestyle but the worst thing those guys could do is maybe break a nail playing the guitar i mean we were truly it was fucking rock and roll what we did like yeah, living that lifestyle and on top riding bikes and at that time we weren't doing it to be famous or nothing we were just doing it to have have fun and go big yeah for sure who gave you the scummy nickname? The scummy nickname, there's so many stories, and I think, you know, my lifestyle back in the day was like, I was a fucking scumbag, you know, especially Warp Tour, dude, the chicks, party and drugs, not showering for however long, you know how it was, but I think it was gnarly. your name could have been scummy too, I think all of us could have been scummy, but the real, real deal was on Warp Tour, Long Beach Dub All-Stars, their roadie. His name was Scummy, and that guy was like a legend. Manly started calling me Scummy after Manly that guy. Manly started calling you Scummy. But I think on Warp Tour, living on a tour bus for three months at a time, living that lifestyle, I mean, it was pretty Scummy, and I really don't even want to talk about a lot of those stories, but it was <laughs> I was Scummy back then what, for sure. Uh, what made you stop riding so many contests? Like when the contest started getting gnarly, why'd you stop? Freestyle for a while, it was all about, you know, your seat grabs, no footy cans, your basic tricks. And I was there when you did your first backflip, right when I saw you do that. And that was at the time the sport when you had to do the backflip to progress. Yeah. You had to. And it was the next step. Like if you weren't doing it, you weren't doing you it. It was the shit. next thing. And I feel before that we were all we were all kind of right there, you know, one trick, a double seat grab, whatever. Like I feel I could have done all that and um but then when the backflip came, I think you know the same story. We saw dudes just drop out like flies. You know, they, they realized the how gnarly that was. And and for me, I knew I, I that wasn't my thing, man. I was truly scared. What trips me out is your skill level was just as good as mine, if not better. Like, you would always jump every jump first. You'd always do the fucking biggest extension on all your tricks. And then when it came to flipping, it was it was gnarly because dudes like you, dudes like Drake, like dudes that like actually were dope, just never flipping. And I always sat back and it it tripped me out because I was always like, how the fuck are these guys not flipping? Like they're they kill it. Like yeah, no, it was but like there's, more of a mental thing than anything. Yeah, I think there's two different kinds of people. Like I don't know, I, you are. I, I truly think you're one of the most naturally talented riders there there truly is. But like for me, I just think you know. You look at the the flip, and I, I just saw the dark side of it. Like, 
if you don't make that, that could end your life, you know, break your neck. We, you and me have seen guys break their neck yep. and straight up. I was just scared. I knew I wasn't going to go that way. And that's where I kind of didn't know where my life was going to go because I dropped out of high school to, to become, you know, a freestyle rider and uh, everything was going good. And then we got to that T in the road and you went left and you really started doing good. Your back flips. And then as I that just realized went on, I'm like, if I want to win, I have to take it serious. Like we, me and you, we thought we took it serious, but we were just having more fun than anything. But then I started seeing all the dudes around me. I'm like, damn, this dude's buying a house. This dude's buying that. I'm like, I can't buy shit. I'm like, I'm barely getting by. You know, that's when I was like, I got to take this serious. I'm like, I want to make money. Like, I'm like, all these dudes around me are making money, and I know I can fucking smoke half of them. You know what I mean? I know. And see, I don't think I never really saw that. I think I was still in that phase of just partying. Like, at that time, I never thought it was going to end. Like, you know, when you're they young just think and it's going to go forever. You just think it's going to go forever, you know? And I just, the partying got more and more. And then when you went your way, I was starting to hang out with the wrong people. I knew I wasn't going to flip inside. You know, yeah. I, I, I would fake it, uh, my sponsors, this. And like, <laughs> I remember I would just do enough tricks just to get through a show. I wasn't motivated to practice. And learn anything new. No, you know, <laughs> you no. guys would always like try and tell me, you know, I just don't think, I, maybe I just don't think I, I even had it. I, I don't know. I just wasn't motivated, but I really think at our age and making money, traveling the world, the, the girls are partying, like I got addicted to that lifestyle. Yeah. Of course, we all broke bones, but when I broke my, my shit and I got pain pills, I liked it. Yeah. You know, I was eating those things like candy because I enjoyed like just melting on the couch and just chilling. I enjoyed being high. So it really started going downhill fast. I started getting addicted to pills. The pills uh, eventually turned into oxys. Yep. That turned into snorting oxys. That turned into getting so addicted to oxys and, and drugs where I physically needed to be on that stuff to even survive. And one of the gnarliest times was when you guys had that intervention for me. I remember you guys were there, all the militia guys, all my best friends. Pennywise showed up. Like I wasn't all about it. I was just there for like support, but I'm like, I knew your deal because I would talk to you all the time. I'm like, dude, like, you, I would always tell you, like, you need to just clean your shit up. Like, and that's the thing. That I'm like, that dude's a fucking idiot. That dude's a fucking idiot. I'm like, don't hang out with those dudes. You're like, yeah, yeah, I know. I'm just, I'm just, you know, it's all good. I'm like, all right, but I know how you were. Like, it, I didn't want to be somewhere and bring you into a situation where everyone's like oh fuck you morrison you need to do this you need yeah. to do that that's what i would always tell you myself like dude come to hang out get your shit together come hang out come ride you I know, know what i mean and that's where i feel like i hurt you the most because like, you were like a brother you were my best friend and i, I i'd see that because you would you were always trying to help me and it's hard I to just help wasn't ready. that doesn't want to be helped you know what i mean like you could I could tell you a million times, don't do this, but until you want to do it, you're not going to do and it. And I know I'd come to your house and fake it, say I'm doing good, <laughs> but you knew I wasn't, I knew you know. Right and, off the bat. and then, yeah, that intervention, you know, that was gnarly. That was a really gnarly time. And even to this day, like, I, I think about that. And to have an, a group of people like that, that really just wanted to see me do good. And for me, I walked out, I told you guys I was fine. Ate some more pills and then You know, home. I, yeah, I went home. I, I got weeded that night. Uh, two days later, my best friend OD'd in my truck. And that. my addiction was so bad that, you know, I took his pills after he died. It was that bad. It was that bad. And it was, you know, it's it's sad to say it, it was, it my, my life was that bad and it was uh it was a very dark and twisted stuff back then when did you finally realize yourself you're like i got a fucking problem that question this goes on for another eight years of me yeah getting you know just ruining my life completely what made you finally realize like you're like i want to get i'm like i need help i want to get over it the last turning point where i knew it was uh it was done for me um pretty much lost everything and it's really you know I don't, I don't really tell people this but i think i just want to tell people this so if somebody is out there dealing with addiction to see how twisted it can get that it went to heroin and then it got so bad that i traded and sold everything for heroin where you know i i had nothing more to get the heroin so then that's where i turned to dust off Dust off is computer cleaner. This is the stuff, like, I remember when I was doing good, we saw it on intervention. Some chick 
you know, huffing down dust off. That's what and like, the idea to do it? No, I'm just saying, like, oh. when I was straight, you look at that and you're like, dude, that is, like, the craziest thing. Like, almost laughing. Like, dude, are you kidding me? Yeah. Dude, my life turned to that. How dark my life got where it was to the point I was going into Target, Best Buy. I had no money. I was stealing dust off. I was passing out in Target. Like, passed out no in Best way. Buy. Um, I remember waking up in the aisle, you know, th- huffing it throwing up in the aisles of Best Buy. And this is stuff I kept from all you guys. I remember one night I, I did that. Um, I got my truck. I passed out in my truck. And While you are driving? When I was driving and a car was coming, I slammed into her. And then I, I, don't, I don't think she had insurance, so she ran off, but it was such a weird experience. I get goosebumps just talking, just bringing this experience up. But I remember it, I was like, the sun was going down. My truck was demolished. And I got out of my truck and I realized, dude, like, this is, I, I can't believe my life got to this. And I was sitting on the side of a curb when my truck was weeded, had no cell phone. And after all this happened, I, I went in the back of my truck and I was just trying to squeeze off more dust off. And it was empty, but I was just trying, like, I, I wanted to die. If I had a gun, I would have shot myself right there. It was like... I was crying. I just couldn't believe it. It was a very surreal, just gnarly just moment. Just thinking like, dude, I had everything. So then after that, I had to have somebody stop. I got their cell phone. My buddy picked me up. I told him, dude, I, I, need, you know, I need to get back. We called AAA. I had him take me to Thrifty because I told him I was thirsty. And after all this happened, I went into Thrifty and I got more dust off. Oh my I God. stole it. And then I walk out and there's an undercover cop and he put me in handcuffs right there right after you just got done right after the yeah after this whole deal i broke down you know i i I wanted to die i was like thinking like how could i just end it right now i was even remembering uh thinking about calling you or feist to try and get me into rehab but i i still don't think i was there to even get to that point yeah but after i called my dad the next day dude just remember it's so heavy just started crying just totally broke down man um my dad picked me up the next day and he was like something out of a movie, dude. My dad showed up and like he he came up, he was like crying. I started crying, dude. It's heavy. Oh, I bet, dude. It's gotta be a hard thing to think about. Yeah. It's Damn, gnarly. It's heavy. Hold on. <laughs> it was just heavy. Good. Yeah, but now you're good, dude. That's the good that's the good side. Uh-huh. You pulled it. Just think, it could have been worse. No, it's not that. It's just You good, dog? <laughs> no, no, just heavy. Um, just my dad picked me up that day. That's when it hit you. Yeah, just I think the whole thing. Just my dad, you know, came up crying and he saw like how bad I was and he just felt so bad, dude. So I never bring this up. It's just fucking hard. I can't even pull it together. Just trying to think, but uh. So my dad picked me up, just hugged me, just wanted his son back, dude, and uh, and that's where I remember I went back in, um, <sighs> trying to pull, but uh, I kicked <laughs> my dirt bike down. Like at that point, I just hated bikes, hated like everything, the whole uh, just the whole scene of it. Whole scene, I was sick of it, dude. Just wanted my life back. Um, so then went to my dad's house, and then that's where it, like really hit me. So like after all this, I was back in my dad's house, dude. Like in my room up. at age 30. It was weird. Like we were trying to go get job interviews. Like I remember going to like just jobs and like I don't even know how to write a resume, dude. You know, yeah. like what am I doing? It was just it was a head trip, dude. Like I lost it all. I had everything. I had I had a house down here. I had brand new cars. I had I had everything, dude. Everything I made it. Wanted. Lost it all, and then uh, so I remember. I was there for about two weeks, and the militia called me to sign my contract for the year, and I, I drove down to militia. whole time, you know, I was at my dad's house, so all this, I, I was just so depressed, still wanted to die, and I remember on the way back, I stopped at Best Buy to get dust off, dude, still had no money, still, like, just had to get high, and it's weird, like, people don't get it, but it was like I was a very, like, the worst addict ever, and uh, I went to Best Buy, Went in my truck, passed out of my truck in the parking lot, 
you know, because I think just getting that high, it would just make me forget about everything going on in my life. Yeah. You know, because I had bills and, you know, at that time for the past three years when I'd get bills, um, I would just throw them in the trash. Yeah. I had no money just, so I was like just piling problems upon problems. So I just, so many, so many issues in my life, just trying to blank it out. So that's why I just want to keep on getting high and high. And uh, on the way home from militia to my house is two hours. It was an eight hour drive and I don't remember. It's just driving around wherever you it is. You don't remember it. No. The last thing I remember is um, I'm in San Fernando Valley and I go into Target and get a thing of dust off. Remember huffing it? I got in my truck. Next thing I remember, I wake up, and my whole front of my truck is completely smashed in. My the horns going off. There's smoke. There's people screaming on each side of me. My truck was demolished. My face was bleeding, and it, dude, I my foot was still in the gas pedal. Dude, I got up. My back tires were still spinning. People were trying to rip me out of my car. I guess I passed down my truck and ran in, sideswiping cars. I think I hit about eight cars and I hit head on into a UPS truck in the middle of an intersection. No way. You know, I don't go to church every Sunday, but I do believe, I do pray on my knees every single night. You know, I, I, I was happy. I got arrested. I was blessed, happy to go to jail. I was in Twin Towers, took me there. I was happy. I'm not made for jail, dude. Yeah. But at that time, I was like, I didn't even bother me. And you I remember care. that. I'm like, <laughs> so I got out, was at my dad's house. And two days later, um, my dad took me to rehab. And remember, we sat down. My dad, you know, we don't know. He, he didn't think he was yeah. going to raise a drug addict. But they're like, so what do you think he's going to get sober? And they said, you know, there's only... Uh, the rates two percent of people that get that go, that go there. two percent. My dad, like, I remember him just start crying, like, dude, my my son's gonna die. I remember my first night in rehab. I'm like, dude, this is it. It it led to this. I, I'm in rehab, like everything you see in Somewhere movies. Somewhere you never thought you would ever be. Yeah. Never thought I'd be in, and uh, and you know what? From that day on, it was the first day of the rest of my life. It's like I was reborn again, dude. I started to see life clear. Everybody else in rehab was like, he's bummed, not pumped to be there, dude. I was like the first guy like going down there for meetings at five o'clock, um, stay there for 30 days. I was so pumped. I remember my graduation, my dad was there. My mom, it was really emotional. I got up there, did a really amazing speech, you know, and it was like very true. And then after that, um, I wanted to stay there, so... You wanted to go stay there? I bugged my parents, you know, I really want to stay in sober living, so I stayed in sober living for three months. You know, I was pumped. Me and Ashley talked before rehab, but it was funny because I was so, like, it's f funny how the world works. Um, I told her to, you know, come and pick me up when I was at my dad's house. I'm like, but dude, you think you could bring me a sack of weed, too? <laughs> They actually, you know, and this is when yeah. I didn't. So she didn't come over. Thank God, because she would have came over yeah. and saw who I was. She would have been over you. Would have been over. So somehow I convinced her, you know, I'm good. Like, please come. Let's go on a, you know, date. So she didn't want to, man. You know, to pick up some guy from sober living, yeah. didn't want a date. It was gnarly. It took a lot for her. And I remember she told <laughs> me the first night she got to the corner of my rehab and turned around. And then it was the second night she came and we went on a date. And she saw me for who I really was because when I'm sober, I'm a great guy, you know, but it's funny the first date, like I had, I'm like, here's the deal. We went to move. I'm like, here's the deal. I have no money. Can you pay like for the movie? So <laughs> she paid for the date. She you went, we went bowling. Swindler, dude. I, so you got yeah. to take you out on your first date. And pay she did no idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But she was a nurse. So she worked at, she had to go work in some rehab. So she knew the deal. She was my angel, man. She saved my life. And then my other friend in rehab, Adam, you met him. I moved in with him. I started working, putting in windows. I've never had a job in my life. Yeah. Started getting my life back, dude. Everything was amazing to me. Every single day was like Christmas. I started doing everything right. I started seeing... For yourself, being yourself the whole time. Myself. Like... I didn't care. And the biggest thing, if you want to get sober, your ego has to go out the window, dude. 100%. You know, and to this day, man... I take bubble baths, bro, every night. <laughs> I snuggle my white dog, dude. 
you know, I don't care, man. Like that's my, that's my life, and I don't care. I'm. Mean, it's just, it's the small things, dude. And now uh, it's been five years. I'm sober, and like, so to get back to when I ran into those cars and like all the people I could have hurt. I got so lucky from not killing anybody that it, my mission in life now is to help as many addicts as I can, and that's like my big deal now. You know, I go to rehabs a couple times a month. I've talking into some schools and you see like when I do my posts on Instagram and stuff, it's like, it's sincere, man. I get people that hit me up on Facebook. I'll get their phone numbers. I talk to about one person a day, help people. And I'm going to do that the rest of my life, man, because I feel from how lucky I was that I didn't kill anybody and that I survived. That I have to, dude, because I got so lucky. So to get this interview over, man. Five years sober, my life keeps on getting better. And the best thing is, like, I remember the first person I called was you out of rehab. Like, yep. they're like, you know, I'm back, dude. I'm, I'm like, clean. just to have our, our friendship back, have our friendship back with, like, all my my buddies, it's huge, dude. For sure. So, still I still can't even get emotional about it. <laughs> awesome. Get in here, dog. Oh, man. Yeah, That's it's gnarly, just, dude. But it's rad, man. I mean, I got the... It's just hard. I, dude, I've never uh, cut this emotional over anything, dude. <laughs> it's weird, dude. I guess it's just so real, dude, because I, I never talk about Well, when talk you talk about it, you relive it. You know what I mean? It's not like you have... You still have all those memories. You ain't ever going to forget that yeah, shit. Yeah, but I just don't bring it up. But, yeah, it just means a lot. Even, like, coming back and just hanging out with all my friends and got everybody back, so... Yeah. We appreciate you, Doug. We gotta cut it right now. I gotta pull it together. Real quick. <laughs> so what do you do now to keep yourself busy? You know, it's funny that I don't think anybody even knew this because I was so high all the time that when I got sober, I realized like, you know, I I, I feel I'm kind of smart, dude. Like I actually <laughs> figured some shit out, dude. You yeah. know, um, out of rehab, I linked up with my best friend from high school. We started Scumbag. That eventually turned into SMBG because I really don't want to have the name Scumbag. I, I feel like that's not who I am no more. Yep. So we changed it to SMBG. And we had to come up with, like, what is SMBG? What could it stand for? <laughs> so we came up with strong motivation brings glory, you know? And that's just kind of something positive. So after uh, SMBG, you know, why not do more? So me and my other good friend Jeff we started an underwear company Skivvy. Skivvy means underwear look it up in the dictionary great name does uh, it so, really yeah you never heard I that i like, just thought that was just a name you came up with uh, are you serious I swear to god i never knew what the hell like meant. it's a military term i was, like, I was like what the hell is like, Skivvy? you know what i mean like just I go no put clue. your skivvies on like it's like been a rant <laughs> it's been a word for like 200 years and if you <laughs> Dictionary Skivvy means underwear. Yeah, so I, I, I think it's spelled S K I V V I E. So we did S K V I. So anyways, did that, and then uh, I'm riding. But you know what? Now I'm riding for fun. Yeah, you know exactly. it's not about. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I'm scared to go out and hit a ramp. You're just riding for Instagram now on Facebook, saying so ride some posts. Instagram. Yeah, that's about it. Not dude, nose wheelies and wheelies because those are safe, dude. <laughs> I gotta tell you, man. I'm a little intimidated coming down here riding with you guys. Um. I don't know. It's just weird. I'm kind of like just kind of scared in life a little bit. Not, I don't know if you kind of understand that. You know you have to go that. to work on Monday. But yeah, yeah, I got a real <laughs> job now and I'm over getting hurt. Maybe it's getting back on pain pills and it just, you grow up, you think about stuff. When For we sure. were young, like we were talking about the story of smoking weed all day, hitting a 200 foot jump and your chain breaks and we were laughing about that, yeah. dude. I have nightmares about that shit now, you know? <laughs> now it's like when you get older and you get I think your parents told you that. My parents, like the older you get, you just think about stuff. So now I just think about everything. I just, my goal now is, you know, and I always looked up to you for having a wife, great kids, being a best dad. Because that's bigger than anything. Being all your gold medals, being a good dad yep. these days is the best thing. And I have so much respect for you for always being there for your kids and that's what I want to be now. You know, I'm getting married next month to Ashley. She saved my life. You know, like, that's what I want. I want to give her a baby. I think I'm going to give her a baby. Couple. Couple. I don't know. We'll start with one. But yeah, I want to be a family guy and just get my life going, man. And riding, ride for fun. I coming down here, riding with you and had a good time. It ain't over, dude. We're going to go ride tomorrow. I know we are. <laughs> well, yeah. After just, I spill uh, your ass on the mountain bike. Well, we'll talk about that too, buddy. <laughs> that's another thing that's been keeping me, uh, on track too, man, because I feel 
you and me, after you hit 30, the more you eat, man, I think our tummies are getting a little bigger. Well, how are you with candy, dude? You still eat candy more than anybody I know. I am a candy guy, but dude, I got into running right after rehab. I like got addicted <laughs> to running. I run like three miles a day, but that's like been keeping me really on point. But I think I have to do that because I love eating so much and junk food that if I don't, I think I would be fat. So, <laughs> so yeah, just staying healthy eating like shit, having fun, and just trying to start a family, man, and enjoying life. I like it, dog. But, yeah, that's about it, man. Thank but you already you. know I'm proud of you from day one, and uh, always does, man. I like it, dog. Thank you for stopping by and talking shit. Hell yeah, buddy. Twitching scummy still lives. <laughs> People.